Okay, today I'm going to share with you a recently discovered mathematical principle that you can use for countless card routines, okay? And for that reason, I've chosen an ordered packet, as you can see, and that will help you appreciate the finale and give you some ideas as to how you could modify what I've done in so many different ways, creating original performances that you can share with your spectators. And also in the description below, I'm going to point you to a short series that I created fairly recently that gives a full explanation with examples of this new principle. Okay, so look in the description below for that series. Okay, so as you can see, I have Ace through Queen of Hearts. Okay, so what we're going to do together is we're going to mix these cards face up, face down, and the order as well. Okay, so in particular, what we'll start with is odd numbers. And more specifically, I need you to just state any odd numbers between, let's say, 1 and 11. 11 might get kind of big here because it's one less than the packet size. But So maybe be between 1 and 7, okay? So maybe you say 3. Okay, so what I do here is I just take the top three, flip them over, random cut, okay? 3 again, top three, flip them over, random cut. One, just flip one. Okay, that's fine. One's a odd number. Five, okay, just make sure I count five. Flip them over, random cut. What would you like now? Three again, that's fine. Flip them over, random cut. You want just one again, that's fine. Random cut. Seven, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Flip them, okay. What else? Three again. You want me to random, randomly cut first? Okay, I can do that. Okay, so three, flip those. Uh, what else? Maybe five? Okay, I'm not sure if we've done five. I think we have. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've mixed the cards quite a bit using odd numbers. So what I thought we would do is continue mixing the cards using even numbers. So what I thought I would do is just set out uh, pairs of cards. In fact, we can set out any even number that you like. In fact, we can set out four, I guess. And then I just need you to uh, randomly pick these up or tell me how you would like these picked up. You want this one first, bottom left, top right, top left, bottom right. Okay, very good. Would you like to do any more of these odd number of flipping of cards and random cuts? Two more? Okay, so I do a random cut. How many would you like flipped? Three? Okay, that's fine. Three cards. Another random cut. How many would you like this time? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Flip. Okay. Now, I think you would have to agree that the state of the cards would have to be really unknown to anyone unless they were a certified savant and could follow the movement of all 12 cards and their orientation through all of this mixing. Okay, uh, but short of that, I don't think any human could. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just deal out the cards into four piles, like so, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just stack the first pile on top of the third, the second on top of the fourth, and square those up, okay? Like so. Now, I have a prediction off to the side that's been in camera view the whole time. So let's just take a look at the prediction. And I just want you to think about how could I have possibly written a prediction that t would tell us anything about these individual piles after all of those random choices were made? How could a prediction have been written ahead of time? Okay, well, let's just see. You will, you know, the two of us working together, you will separate the even value cards from the odd value cards. Okay, <laughs> is that possible after all of that randomization of the cards? Okay, well that's odd, okay? So we're hoping the rest are odd. <laughs> that, I see a jack is an 11, so that's odd. Nine is odd, seven is odd. What about this one? Ooh, three is odd. Oh, yep, this, and one. One is odd, okay? And I would suspect that this would leave us with even value cards. 
Whoa, we were able to mix these cards with significant input by you or for you by your future spectators. And nonetheless, you can know exactly the outcome. Okay, so I'm hoping the magicians out there can see the endless possibilities for applications of this principle. Because what we've shown here is that the original even position cards and the original odd position cards are guaranteed to be separated. So if you have two sets of cards and that you're hoping to put through just tremendous mixing with the spectator sounding in just about at every stage, but nonetheless, you're able to separate that mess into two piles that actually agree with a written prediction that you wrote before all of the choices were made. You can accomplish some mind-blowing card magic with this principle. Okay, so once again, uh, please take a look at the series I have linked below. is really not that long in terms of total number of minutes. It's broken up into four short videos. And to give away just a little bit of it, I call it a new Hummer principle. And that is in fact true. What we're doing here with the flipping of odd cards, to my knowledge, has never been done before in a systematic way, nor has anyone presented to the world, okay, what happens when you do that? Well, we've just proven that doing that together with pushing off even sized packets with random stacking of those will preserve the position parity of the cards so that when you separate the even position cards from the odds, you will also be separating the original even card values from the odd card values. Absolutely amazing. So anyway, I encourage you to take a look at that series and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.